Hello again, this is my YouTube voice. Let's write code. Today we're going to be talking about JavaScript Proxy. It's one of those sneaky little APIs that are really fun once you start using it. For instance, have you ever wanted to add a layer of customized behavior on things in JavaScript? Such as know when someone calls something, uh, a certain property on an object, or maybe magically create properties on the fly as they call them? Oh, you haven't? Well, too bad, because I'm going to show you JavaScript Proxy anyway. So let's jump over to the code here and create an API. So we'll say let bears and this will be an object with a grizzly true. This is our fancy API. Now we want to know how many times somebody accesses uh, a property on this API. So we need to count them. So let's say uh, grizzly count and this will be our counter. We count each one. Um, and then let's go ahead and create a proxy. So we'll say proxy bears and we're going to create a new proxy so then what we're going to do is we're going to feed it our api uh, which is bears in this case and then we're going to feed it a handler object uh, of all the different things all the different ways we want to tap into it so we want to know when someone accesses properties on this api such as this property grizzly here so we're going to provide a handler or a trap called get and so every time this trap is going to get called, it's going to provide us with the target, which is our original uh, API that we're provided here. Um, and then it's also going to provide the property uh, here that we're trying to access. So then we simply just need to determine if we only really want to count when they access the grizzly property. So we'll just say, does the property equal uh, grizzly? So does it equal grizzly? If it does, if they're accessing this grizzly property, then we want to increment our grizzly count. And we still want to give them the property, the original property itself. Uh, we don't want to give them undefined. So we're going to return the property off of the target here, off of the original object, and give them the, uh, give them the thing that they wanted in the first place. So now what we can do is we can use our proxy bears, our, our proxy here, and we can access this grizzly property here. And so we'll just access it one, two, three, four times to test it. And hopefully this should make our grizzly count uh, count uh, four, and if we look over here in the console, there it is. We've counted how many times we've used uh, this property. So this would be really cool for like logging, uh, you know, calls on your API uh, or, or other kind of various things. So another use case for proxy is uh, validation. So what if we have this bears API and we want to make sure that nobody is setting anything that's not a bear? We can use this other trap called set, and this will also provide us the target or the original. Uh, API that we're proxying. Um, it'll provide the property name um, that we are trying to set and the value that we're trying to set to that property. So then what we can do is we can test that, pro that uh, property that they're trying to set against um, a bear name here. So we'll say, okay, grizzly is a good bear name that they can set, brown's a good bear name that they can set, and polar. These are the only three bears that we know. Um, so we can just make sure that the property they're setting is one of those. So say index of prop uh, does not equal negative one. We are going to throw a really bad error. So we're going to throw this error, new error uh, in all caps. That is totally not a bear. Okay, so if they try to set a property on our API that's not a bear, it's going to throw that really nasty message. But if they do set a property, a good property, then we're going to go ahead and let them do it. So we'll say target prop equals the value. So let's go ahead and try to set a property on our proxy bears here. Um, that is not one of these uh, valid bears. So we'll say aardvark. That's a good not bear. And set it to true. And look, we get a really nasty error message that says that is totally not a bear. But then if we go ahead and we actually set a property, so we'll say proxy bears, and we set the polar equal to true, then it totally lets us do that. And when we console log out, the uh, proxy bears polar that true, you can see that it actually successfully used this target prop equals value and set the value um, that we're expecting. Now there's lots of traps uh, available to us depending on how you want to manipulate the, uh, the original object. So one of these, uh, for example, is a delete property. So if you try to delete a property off of it, such as if we have this, uh, polar bears polar that we want to get rid of uh, when we call the delete. Uh, you can see that we have console logged out. You have deleted polar. Another really cool one is uh, when you want to proxy a function itself. So let's go ahead and add some space here. 
And we're going to create a function called uh, growl that returns gr, not gu gu gu. Um, and then we're going to create a proxy called loud, let's spell it, loud growl, new proxy. And we're going to proxy that function instead. And so we want to know when this function is called. So we're going to use the trap called apply. And so apply will provide us with the target or the original function itself. And uh, the, this argument, the context it's in, and then the arguments provided uh, to that function, which we're not using. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to call the original target function, this original growl, and we're going to get the value that it returns from it. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make it in uppercase, so to uppercase. And then it also needs some exclamation points because it's going to be a loud growl, not a quiet growl. Uh, and the last thing we want to do is we want to return um, that, that result. So now when we use our loud growl and we call this function here, so we'll say console log and we'll call the growl loud, loud growl function, you can see uh, that we no longer just say grr, we say grr with a lot of exclamation points and in capital letters. So I know what you're thinking, that's a powerful API, but I can do all of that without proxy. And you're right, so let me show you another example of uh, probably one of my favorite uses for it is um, using it for computed properties. So let's create a new file called person.js. And in this, we have a person. And this person has a name. It has a first name, uh, which is Bear. And it has a last name, which is um, Nick Bearison, I guess. Um, and we want to proxy this person to figure out ways that we can combine its first and last name in clever ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a clever person. And this is going to be a proxy. And it's going to proxy our person. So then we're going to provide it this trap, the get trap. And we're going to spell function correctly. Uh, and that will give us the target and the prop. So then what we can do with this trap is we can find out if the first, we want to, we want to check to see if the, the property they're trying to get is already exists in the, uh, the, the object itself. So if they're trying to do uh, clever person uh, dot first, you know, we'll just give them the first name. We don't need to do anything with that. So we'll just say if uh, the prop is not in the target, that is when we want to do our clever stuff. Otherwise, we're just going to return the target, target, prop. We'll just give them that original property. So now what we want to do is we want to inflect that property name. We want to make, we want to do some magical stuff to that property name. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that property name and we're going to split it by underscores, okay? Then we're going to map it. We're going to loop through that array and change each part of that array, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to return the parts from the target. So this means anything separated by, so first and last, anything separated by an underscore here, it's going to go through the target here, this original one, and grab that part. So it's going to grab, so if we say first underscore last, it's going to first grab this property first, and then it's going to last grab that property last. Wow, that was really hard to say. Um, and anyways, and so now that we have this array, we just need to join them together with a space and we can return that. I said we can return that. And so now when we go and we console log out this clever person first underscore last, you see we get the full name Bear McBarrison. And if I wanted to change it, so I wanted maybe the last name first, I can say last underscore first. And you see magically our, uh, our bear is now last name first, McBarrison Bear. Or we can do something even more ridiculous like last first, 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 first. And you can see we're now McBarrison Bear, 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 Bear. And then if we want, if we say like we went in and we changed our uh, clever person um, last name to uh, Barry um, and then console logged out uh, our clever person uh, we'll say first underscore last. You see now the property updates. So now it's Barry McBear after we set the uh, the last name to Barry. Now computer properties are great, but I think we can add a little bit more mad to our science. So let's go ahead and create another file called array.js. So let's say we have an array of bears here 
And we want to go through and find a bear by the ID number here that we have on each of these objects in our array. And probably the simplest and not most efficient way is just to loop through all, every single one of these bears. So we'll say loop through for each through these bears and we'll say, does the bear ID equal the one we're looking for, which is three? If it does, then we say found equals the bear and we find our bear. Now the problem with this is that we need to loop through every single bear. Sure, we could have used a for loop and then exited early, um, but still, even if the bear is at the end, we'd have to loop through the entire array uh, just to find the one we're looking for. We can do this a little better. So a better way to do this is to just create an index here. Uh, so we'll say create an index and we'll create a little hash here, a little object. And we still are going to have to loop through all the bears to index them. Um, but we can only do it once, and then our, when we find multiple bears multiple times, we, you know, those will be really fast. We don't have to loop through them every single time. So the first time around, what we're going to do is we're going to index the bear by the ID, and we're going to assign it to the bear. So we're building up this little index. So now, if we want to find this polar bear, it's really simple. All we do is look in the index by the ID 3. Um, we can use the correct JavaScript syntax to do that. Um, and then so then if we want to find the, uh, the black bear here, this has the ID 4, so we can just look in the index for the ID 4. That is much faster and much, much more efficient. But we have to go ahead and make sure we index everything. And when we add a bear or when we remove a bear or all these kind of stuff, we have to keep track and update our index uh, with, with these properties. Now, what if we instead, we proxy that array so that every time we created or added an item or a bear to our array, it automatically indexed the new ID. So let's create an indexed array proxy. So let's comment that out and we're going to create a new property called indexed array. This will be a new proxy and we're going to proxy array itself. Why not? And so we have another trap for when you call new on something uh, to initialize an object. Uh, we have a trap called construct. So construct. Did I spell that correctly? Hopefully I did. So that's going to give us the target, but it's also going to give us all of the arguments passed to it. And the only one we care about is the original array they provided, such as when you do new array and then you're initializing the array and you pass it an item of one, two, three, four, four. Um, we only care about this array um, for this for this proxy example. Okay, so with that original array, we want to go ahead and index it first because they they are passing in this original array. And we want to loop through any of the existing values and make sure we create our index. So we'll say const index. We'll create a little hash there. And then we're going to go through that original array and we're going to index it. So we'll say function item. Um, and then index. And we're going to index by the item ID and assign it to the original item there. So now that we have an index of our original array, we can go ahead and create our new array that we're going to return. So we'll say new array. And we're going to use our target which our target is the original, it's going to be the original array here. So we're just, basically it's the same thing, new array is basically saying new target. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to then pass it our original array um, parameter that we, uh, we have passed in. Cool, so the next thing we need to know is when they push a new item to this array. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some proxy in inception here uh, by saying new proxy. And we're going to proxy this new array that we already have within our own proxy. Because we need to know when they access a property on this new array. So when we create a new array and say they, they call push on it, we need to know uh, if they, they're trying to access that property so we can kind of hijack it and uh, know to keep indexing uh, new items pushed to it. So we'll add a git trap here. And this will have the target and the property name here. And so then if the property name equals push, if they're trying to get that push object or that, that push function off of the array, we're going to hijack that and we're going to return our own function here. So we'll say return function item. And then we're going to be sure to this new item that they're pushing onto the array, we'll be sure to add that new item um, they're pushing to our index to make sure we have that there. So when we do these finds, they can find it. And then finally, what we want to do is we just want to return uh, the target uh, name. So uh, the original target and the original name. 
Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to call that function, that push function, and provide it with the item. So this way the item still gets pushed onto our original array. So let's start using this index array on our bears here. We can get rid of this old array. And so when we have bears, we're going to say bears equals new index array. And we're going to pass it an array of initial values here to our index array. So when we call this index array, it's going to go here and it's going to call our construct tra trap. And our construct trap is going to take that original array that we passed in here, all this array of bears, and it's going to go loop through them and index them by ID. Then we're going to create a new array using the target, which is just the, the just an array type, and we're going to give it those original values so it can continue to create that original array that we would here in the new array. Then we're going to proxy that and return that proxy uh, array. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a trap to that new array that we're passing back called uh, get. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for any time that they try to get the push. And we're going to hijack that one and return a function. So like, for instance, here if we're on bears and we try to push a new bear onto it. So say ID 55 name uh, is a brown bear. So when we, when we access this push property, uh, it will instead catch that here or trap it here and return our own function here that first indexes the item by the ID and then it calls the original function, the, the push function on the array itself. So the item still winds up on the array. So the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to find items by the ID. So if we're down here and I want to find this brown bear that I just added, so let's say const brown uh, and I can say bears find by ID and the ID is 55. I want to implement this function here. And since we already have this trap here on our proxied array, uh, we can just go here and say else if the property name here equals find by ID, we can return our own function that they search by the ID, the search ID. And so we can return our index uh, search ID and we can just search our index for that search ID and do that really efficient search. Cool, now this is still an array, so there's still lots of other properties on this array that we wanna be able to let them still access, you know, like unshift, pop, push, all that uh, stuff. So if, if we haven't uh, hijacked the property here, we're just gonna return the original property that they're requesting from it. Cool, so now let's go down and test our code and see if it finds this brown bear by the ID 55 in a little efficient way. And there you go. If you look over here, it's found our brown bear by the ID 55. Maybe we want to find a different bear uh, in a pretty more efficient way. So we'll say bears uh, find by ID and the polar bear. And so as you can see, it finds our bear uh, using the index. So I hope this video has gotten you excited about proxy and all the cool things it can do. And if it has, then share the video and maybe other people get as excited about this sneaky little API as I am. Uh, and if you like the video, then like it, I guess. Or if you want to see more videos, then uh, yeah, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.